Redditors who live in secluded towns, what is the darkest thing that happened in your town but is kept secret? Well, we had the 32-year-old son of a prominent member of town rape and sodomize a 14-year-old girl. Notable quotes from the kangaroo court, she was begging for it. You see that it's on that one, how was I supposed to know? She didn't try real hard to stop anything. Anyways, he got off with a slap on the wrist. Two weeks later, he was found by cleaning staff in the local gym, beaten with a wooden broom handle shoved up his ass. Rumor was that it was a group of guys from the high school that jumped him after another chick lured him there. Honestly, a lot of people know who did it, but no one breathed a word. He survived, but left the area and basically just disappeared. Over the summer there was a guy found hanging from a tree on the sheriff's property. The sheriff disliked this young man and treated him poorly during his incarceration at the county jail. Many witnesses said that the day he got released from jail, the sheriff invited him to his secluded property and told him he could help him get back on his feet. Two days later, a couple of teenage boys fishing in a creek discovered the guy hanging in a tree. Authorities was notified, no investigation was done, and it was immediately ruled a suicide. This boy was a known drug addict with no family or friends, so there was really no one to press the issue. The local news wrote a small article on man found dead from apparent suicide and then it was hush hush after that it's just one of those things we will never know. My town isn't very secluded but I think this still works. So there is this building that used to be a hotel and one day this guy shows up and he takes multiple trips going in and out with a bunch of equipment. They found him a little while later in his room. He had assembled an entire guillotine and cut his head off. Well, that's the first time I've ever done the mildly impressed hut to a suicide story. Small town of about 2000 to 2500 in the Midwest, when suddenly about one fourth of the population just up and left. No word, no nothing. None of them had kids or extended family and none of the papers said anything about it. This was back in maybe the late 80s. This happened when I was pretty young but I just remember one day one of my teachers wasn't there and I found out from my parents a ton of people had just left overnight. Most personal belongings were taken with them but mattresses and furniture was still in their houses. I still have no clue what that was about and when I've asked my parents more recently they said the rumor around town was that all those people worked for the CIA or FBI and were reassigned all of a sudden. I returned home from school one day to a very powerful smell of gasoline throughout my neighborhood and every emergency responder our town had. It was later found that a father of three little girls, who wasn't living there, tucked all three girls into bed and slit their throats. He gained access to the house by dismissing the babysitter. He then tried to blow the place up by flooding the basement with gasoline and calling the mom telling her come home, I've hurt the girls. Thankfully the mom went to authorities instead. If he was successful, my house would have blown as well. The father turned himself in and has been in prison ever since. The daughters were memorialized with a playground and the house has been torn down. I'm not sure what happened to the mom but I've heard here and there that she has found peace in a new town. The daughter of divorced parents was raped to death by the mother's boyfriend. She was six. Her father was contacting CPS and presenting evidence that the man was abusing his daughter under her mother's care. Nothing was done about it until she was life flighted to Salt Lake where she died of her wounds and early in the investigation the mother admitted to letting her boyfriend play with her. The worst part is, is that because the abuser murderer was part of the tribe all he had to do was stay on tribal lands to not be taken into custody. So while the long process of an FBI investigation and the FBI jumping the correct hoops to make an arrest on tribal land, this man walked freely as long as he was on the reservation. Most people rejected the abuser murderer entirely but what hurt more is seeing the people who went out of their way to help him. His family tried to open a food truck where the highway passes through the rest so he could have a job. It earned a large protest considering the size of the town and few out of towners stopped for tacos, so they fortunately had to shut down. The man's cousin was chief so he was given a job in the dispensary. 
Some other members of the tribe who worked there walked out on the job and went to the council to try and stop it. Fortunately as of now the FBI has taken the mother and boyfriend into custody in their awaiting trial. I've been called for jury duty twice now and it's been cancelled each time. My mom told me this story once that back when she was growing up in a small farming community in Ohio. There was some kind of neighborhood party attended by a bunch of families with kids all around the same age. All the kids, including herself, had this like big slumber party in the basement. They wake up the next morning and one of the kids is found in the middle of the road, having been hit with a truck, but with his whole body zipped all the way up in his sleeping bag. None of the kids owned up to doing and it the adults could never figure it out either. After a while people just started moving on with their lives and everyone pretty much forgot about it. Edit, I didn't mean for this get attention and I can't reply to all of you, so I'll just say, this would be in Salina, Ohio around 1972, if anyone can find sources on it, go for it. I did some googling and couldn't really come up with anything. And some of you I think are right my mom said she probably thinks it was a prank that went terribly wrong. Not far from where my parents grew up is the town of Skidmore, Missouri which is honestly a supremely fucked up place of weird sinister stuff. The most commonly known incident is from the 1980s when Ken McElroy was shot to death while sitting in his truck with his wife, in front of the pool hall in town in broad daylight. There were dozens of witnesses who saw the shooting which came from multiple firearms, but they denied seeing the shooting or who may have been responsible. The news stories from the time sort of painted McElroy as a town bully almost like Biff from Back to the Future. Except he was a fucking violent monster who had beaten, figuratively and literally, over a dozen charges including theft, rape of a minor, remember his wife? Yep she was one of the no-rape victims and carried Ken's child at 14, and other general violent acts. Leading up to his town-sanctioned execution, he had the gall to appeal a two-year sentence for shooting a geriatric grocer in the neck with a shotgun and nearly decapitated him. So, why did he do it? Because the grocer asked Ken's daughter to put back a piece of candy she hadn't paid for. People appeared fed up with this rampaging 6 feet 5 inches 270 pound thug who thought he could get away with rape and wanton violence. So somebody or a group of somebody's shot him at least twice and emptied quite a few rounds into his truck. No witnesses and even his wife who was in the truck refused to identify the shooters. A family friend was super drunk, he was walking home and fell unconscious on the road at the bottom of a hill. Another family friend, small town so we all knew each other, was driving home late, he heard a thump and a crunch when he went over a hill. He got out of the car thinking he hit a wallaby or something, he instead found his friend dead. Everyone decided to forget what he did, because it really wasn't his fault, there was no way he could have seen him asleep at the bottom on the hill in the middle of the road. It was at such an angle that the headlights didn't spot him. It's a bit weird this has come up because I drove past a super drunk dude just a few hours ago on my way home from work, he was drunk and stumbling on the road. He fell over and lost a thong, flip flop to you Americans. I called the police and told them, they said they'd pick him up and take him home where he would be safe, didn't want a repeat of what happened back in my hometown to happen to that random drunk guy. Coal Mine Country PA. Lots of stuff happens. Guy was molesting his daughter and her friend. Went to jail for a few years. When he came back, his house mysteriously burnt to the ground with him in it. Another guy got caught selling crack to a couple of local kids, yes I'm that old. He was found in the middle of the street having been run over by a large vehicle repeatedly. A woman stole some jewelry from her elderly neighbor. She lost her hand in an unknown accident. Guy beat his wife. He left town with two hands that were destroyed by a ball peen hammer. Teenage girl killed another girl's dog over a boyfriend. Now she sports a nasty scar across her face and is missing an eye. That and lots of smaller stuff. Justice is handled locally. I lived in a town of like 5000. The only secret is the whole system is corrupt. 
One police officer got caught stealing painkillers basically got a reduced and deferred misdemeanor so in like three months it was off his record and back to being a cop. A cop's son lost it one night. Got in a fight with his girlfriend at the bar. My best friend was the bartender and kicked him out, 20 minutes later he is outside putting holes into the bar with a semi-auto. Amazingly nobody got hit. The cop's son also got his charges reduced from basically attempted mass shooting to discharging a firearm within city limits I don't think that's even a misdemeanor. There's so much more. But the gist is corrupt people run the paper, the police station and the court. If you're in this circle you can do whatever you want and if you're me you will get sentenced to one year in prison for one gram of weed. I got the fuck out like 10 years ago. I wouldn't say we live in a secluded town, but when my mother was in school her best friend got a job working for the sheriff. She later came to school and told them that the sheriff had been molesting her. She also began telling people about what they have been using the tunnels under the town for. The police supposedly, had been filming child pornography. After that day she never made it home. She was found later naked, hogtied and shot in the back of the head. No one could prove it, and the sheriff had been suspected of many things but nothing ever came of it. They just announced that there was a man seen in a white van abducting people. But her friends knew. Her family knows. This is Red Bluff California BTW. The tunnels were originally used by Chinese immigrants, they go through our main street and through Rio Street, they lead to houses and some businesses but they have been condemned. There are sensors down there though so if you get in the police are right there to get you out. Edit the little girl's name was Rochelle Ward and the sheriff supposedly responsible was Koenig but he died years back of old age. About 50 to 60 years ago my neighbor's grandfather chased away all minorities from our village. He set their houses on fire and destroyed the properties they left behind, so they never came back. There are very few minorities in my village to this day, even tough that guy is long dead. His grandson is married to the only doctor here and he's a great neighbor. Eater, this got way more attention than I expected, so I'll try to clarify some things. This happened in Hungary and I don't know of any other similar cases here. The towns nearby have noticeably more minorities and it got me thinking why our village has only two gypsy families. When I asked my grandma about this, she told me this story but little else about it. She asked me not to tell this to anyone because only the elders know about it and some of them deny it ever happened. Apparently my neighbor's grandfather, let's call him Jay, was one of the loudest against the minorities, mostly gypsies, and he decided they had to go. So one night he set their houses on fire and they left, to be fair, I highly doubt this was done by a single person over just one night. It's important to note that my grandmother was a child when this all happened so she might remember some details wrongly and since nobody has ever talked about Jay's attack I can't confirm what exactly happened. I for myself think that 20 to 30 families can't be thrown out like this overnight so there are definitely some things that just don't add up. I hope this helps to understand it all a bit better and feel free to ask more. Probably that old guy who had like eight children, sexually assaulted two of his daughters, raped his stepdaughter multiple times, getting her pregnant and completely mentally impaired in the process. Also mentally and physically abusing the rest of his family. Letting one of his sons die from pneumonia because he refused him any treatment and in the end tried to force his wife to buy him the way out of prison. Ask anyone outside of my town and they will have never heard of him but I remember him pretty clearly since I was also friends with one of his sons my age and almost the entirety of the rest of the family. I was at their house pretty often when I was younger until my parents forbid me from going there again. Because how I later found out around that time the first accusations became public since one of his daughters had moved out and reported everything to the police. Edit 1, a few more details, all this took place in the north of Germany in I think 2016, in a small town of around 3000 people and there were only two very short newspaper article about it. Which my mum decided to put on our pin board in the kitchen. Edit 3, alright guys, since a lot of you want to know what case this was. 
I googled it and the only thing that came up was an article by the Eckenforder Zeitung which is a German newspaper that's all you're gonna find. My partner's family has a lot of farmland in a small, rural US community. Back in the 1970s, they went out to check on the cows and three of them had been killed overnight but in a very weird way. They were totally drained of blood and their eyes, ears, tongues, and genitals had been meticulously, surgically, removed. Each of the bodies were laying in the middle of a large indent in the ground, like they had been dropped from a high height. The marks on the carcasses and land were totally inconsistent with any animal attacks the family had seen before. The only explanation they could come up with was some sort of cult or an alien abduction. No one in the family wanted to talk about it because they were afraid of being branded as the town alien nuts. At the time, they managed to quietly inform the sheriff about the cattle slaughter, and they ended up talking to the FBI about it. Turns out there's been widespread reports of cattle deaths like this in the rural US since the 1970s but no one has figured out the exact cause. No one talks about it to this day. My partner and I actually just learned about this from his mother recently and we looked into it. We're both skeptical, sciency, evidence needing people so we track down the now publicly available FBI files as well as newspaper articles from the time. There's still no satisfactory explanation for the hundreds of cattle deaths that have occurred across the rural US. There was even a new case in Oregon as recent as this past summer.